Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're going to build that little system that we laid out the other day and got all the pre-cutting done so we can snap it into place pretty quick. Shouldn't take very long. All right. Let's go do it. Beautiful day. Okay, just got done installing this little system that we laid out the other day where we put it all on the table, cut the wires to fit. We knew exactly what we were going to put this into. Very small corner, very small footprint. As you can see, only about one foot wide, which is the width of that Red Dodo. 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate plus. That's the one with the 200 amp BMS on board. And then we're within two feet going the other way. So a very small footprint. We've got the Victron Energy Pure Sine Wave Inverter. That's the Phoenix 12 volt, 375 watt unit. That little black box there that you can see is flashing is the dongle. Bluetooth dongle, which gives us a little more uh, information and versatility with the inverter. We've got the 50 amp breaker off the inverter to the battery, solar isolator switch, 200 watts of solar coming through to that. And then over there, we've got the Victron Energy Smart Solar Charge Controller MPPT 75 volt, 15 amp charge controller. <clears throat> so it all went together very, very quickly. I did change the configuration just a little bit, but all those wires that I cut the other day, I was able to use. Uh, I thought I'd maybe tuck it back in there a little further, the charge controller and the switch, solar isolator switch, but I went ahead and moved it just to where that works perfect for this little corner. It is up and running. As you can see with that yellow light on the charge controller right there, it just went into its absorption phase. Battery sitting there at 14.2 volts. And it was pretty full battery. Once I got done tying everything up together, flipped the switch and let the solar come back in, it only took 150 watt hours before it went into absorption mode. So. Now let's take a look at what that little dongle does. And there's the <clears throat> Victron Energy Bluetooth dongle right there. And you can see it's flashing blue on the Bluetooth, what says Bluetooth. And if we look in the back, you can see right there is where it plugs in. Just simply snap it into place. And the inverter on off button and eco mode button is right here. It's currently in the inverting or on position. And if we go to the app for that dongle, you can see in that top it says mode and it actually says off, even though the inverter is in the on position. And that's because you can just press that button and you can turn the inverter on into an inverting mode. You can turn it off like it is now, or you can put it down into eco. And if you scroll a little bit further down, you'll see right there, wake up minimum power, 15 watts. That is the minimum amount of power it takes on a load to wake it up out of eco and start inverting out of its kind of resting, pulsing uh, state where it's less than one watt in the eco mode. Or you can do it right here. You can just press that. Now it has gone into eco mode, even though on the unit itself, it's in the on position. There is a, you know, the button back there, you can push the button into eco mode, but you can also do all of these functions from the app itself. So probably for the purposes that I'm using this unit now, I'll leave it in the on position. When I'm done using it for the evening, I'll just simply turn it off. And now it's drawing zero power. So that's a really nice function. 
I played around with that. I was hoping I could wake that up with a less of a load than even 15 watts. That's the minimum. Uh, but you can set it higher if you want a higher wake up uh, minimum power. And looking at the dongle app again, you can see that it's reading the voltage at 14.2, which is exactly what it is. And we'll verify that with the charge controller, but that's holding it right at float right now, the charge controller, but this is the dongle app. So the inverter is reading 14.2. And now looking at the 7515 charge controller, you can see the state is in absorption. 14.2 volts, just holding it exactly how it's programmed to do. I keep it at 14.2, uh, and then after two hours in absorption, the float would be 13.5, but it's taking zero watts right now, and periodically it might let in one watt once it starts to drop below 14.2 within two hours of absorption. If it does ever drop down, it'll just let in one watt, two watts. It'll push it right back up there and then it'll shut the panels off again just to hold it steady for two hours. And then it'll all be completely fully charged, which it is right now. But the charge controller and the inverter reading the exact same voltage. And here's one more look with the VE Direct Smart Dongle. You can see 14.21 and what I've named the Phoenix system, which is the charge controller, 14.2. So they're reading exactly the same. Now, as it's an absorption phase, if I was to turn a load on right now, as you saw, there was zero watts coming in. Uh, it would open up the panels. Say I put a 50 watt load on there, it would open up the panels and let 50 watts come in just to keep holding this at 14.2 till it finished off that absorption phase. So right now it's not taking anything to hold it there. But yeah, if you did turn it on during its absor absorption phase and started running something, the panels would try to compensate to hold it up there if it could be done. So end of the day right now, got up to a nice full charge. Everything's looking great. And that little bouncing around, I've got some other Victron products running. So as they kind of move around a little bit, it jumps around on the screen. But VE Direct is the dongle. The Phoenix system is the charge controller sitting there at absorption. The state is off. And I can just toggle that on on the app and start drawing some loads. So yeah, pretty happy with this little system. It's going to work well for this zone of the house. Like I told you, I've kind of divided the house into several different zones. And this is going to run uh, one side of the house easily. And if I need to, I can always put on another solar panel or two. But I think this is going to work good just as being a small little self-contained unit. 200 watts of solar and a nice 200 amp hour lithium battery. So all of that, very simple, very few moving pieces right there. Did not take long to build that. All right. And now that I've got the system completely installed, the last thing I'm gonna do is screw this pass-through gland where my solar panel cables are coming in here. Very nice tight fittings underneath. And this will just push up against the wall. I'll drill a couple of, about four screw holes, one in each corner, tighten that up there, keep any small little insects from crawling up there and getting into the, to the wall. I use these all the time. Anytime I'm passing something through a wall, they work fantastic. This side of the house can take a beating with rain but it's not gonna affect with anything here. I mean, they screw up so tight against the wall, but that's the last thing I gotta do. I've got it all in there good. Come out here with the screw, done, screw gun, tighten that up and call it good. Hey, thanks as always for tuning in, everybody. Yeah, those
those those babies are ready to be picked. These are great lemons. Hope you're all having a good day wherever you are. And we'll catch you on the next one. Aloha.